Welcome back everybody. So we are gonna jump straight into the bumper. Um, I've disassembled a lot of the car. I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I learned along the way. Um, just for, you know, food for thought. And then we'll jump into trying to get this bumper test fitted now that I have everything out of the way that I think was stopping me from getting it put on previously. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. First and foremost, the uh, thing I knew that had to happen based on the last time I looked at this was the mud guard had to come out, at least the front half anyway. So as you can see, I went ahead and ripped that out. Uh, that's too easy. It's a series of push pins and I believe three or four bolts up underneath that hold the underskirting together and then that just comes right out. Once that was off, I was then able to see a little bit more in depth about what I needed to do in regards to this little piece right here that I mentioned in the past video regarding the bumper. I didn't know what this was for, and I almost cut it off, but I'm really glad I didn't cut it off because what I realized after I got the underskirting off was that this piece right here, which is the bumper front mounting plate that mounts right there, comes off the car relatively simple. It's just a 10 millimeter bolt there and push pins on the back side. So once you got the push pins released and the bumper and the bolt out, this came right off. The last thing I took notice of was this corner piece right here. Um, in order for me to really get in behind here to look around to see how I'm going to mount this bumper, um, there is a push pin right there. I'm sure you can see it right there. Um, just push that up from the underside and this gives you enough wiggle room to be able to get back behind there comfortably and see what's going on from the backside. So with those things out of the way, now what I think I'm ready to do is to slide the bumper in place on the car and see how it fits. So first impressions up top, all these holes, they line up. Uh, some of them may need to be a little bit bigger to fit the pins through, but that's okay. That's easy. The upper pieces are the correct width, and they butt up against, and they connect fine. Same on this side. Correct size, it's going to work. So this is the passenger side. You got this area right here under the headlight that is butt up against the headlight, and is causing a little bit of a gap right here. The underside that I wanted to show you it's more or less just there to provide stability for the corners that the black bumper pieces that I took off were acting as originally. So that's pretty good. Driver's side, yikes. Uh, it's about a quarter inch off and about a quarter inch from coming to the edge. As you can see, the headlight is literally rubbing right up against that bumper and it is not allowing it to go back any further. So overall, first impressions, uh, bumper's really good fitment. I'm very satisfied with how it looks right now. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but I have a lot of time to do it because like I said, I'm not putting it on and painting it till the wide body gets here. So like I said, I'm gonna jump back into it. Day two of the bumper fitment. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over it, show you where I'm at currently, and what I think needs to happen to get it the rest of the way. Passenger side has a couple issues still that remain, but nothing too major. Um, I got some rubbage right here, and still rubbage right there. The upper portion of the fender has about an eighth of an inch gap, while the lower portion has just under a quarter inch. The driver's side has seen the most improvement. Uh, again, at the top, right around a an eighth of an inch. At the bottom, just under a quarter inch. So this is slowly closing up, which is nice. So I went ahead and installed 
the fog lights and the front indicators. The fog lights and indicators fit. Um, they will require a little bit of tweaking. For example, back side sits nice and flush with the, in with the indentation. This side does not, so I'll have to cut this out some more and then relocate the bolt location point in this corner to pull this up, but that's not a big deal. Um, it's pretty much the same exact thing on the passenger side as well. Again, fog light lines up perfect. Front indicator, I didn't even bolt in because the bolt needs to be shifted over and adjusted. And this corner also needs trimmed out here as well. All right, here we go again. Day three of the uh, bumper fitment. So I need to invest in at least a third battery and ensure that I have them plugged in when I'm doing this. Cause last night I ran out of battery again and did not get the last little bit of this project recorded. There's still some hitting going on in here and a couple spots up under the headlight housings on both sides that I'm gonna continue working on today. But, I mean, you can see the gaps are closed up. These are lined up where they need to be. I just need to figure out how I'm going to mount them. Um, I may look at the way they the way they were intended to mount them from the, from the factory. I also may look at taking the factory brackets off and seeing how hard those would be to mock up and fit on there as well. But, yeah, it's uh, coming together pretty good. So, I'm going to go ahead and take it back off again. And mock up the front grill, make sure that it still that it fits and everything's good there before I continue on and uh, go from there. So as you saw, the grill fits. Took a little bit of tweaking, but it's in there. Um, next thing I'm gonna tackle is these brackets up here. So the factory uh, pin that was put in place here by the manufacturer, it does line up with a hole. It lines up with this one right here. You can see it, it's kind of dark, right there. The problem is, you can't get nothing back there because it's too narrow to put a screw in. The screw goes up here on the factory bracket. I'm going to attempt to take the factory bracketing off of this and mount it on the other bumper. I just gotta get the I gotta trace a template out of this little corner piece here and see if this will even 
line up flush with that. So that's next. So I decided to take a crack at this thing off camera just to you know nail down the specifics so I wasn't boring you guys with an overly long time lapse of me trimming and trimming and cutting and trimming. You get the idea. Uh, the bracket is on. Um, I have the drill, these two holes, and these two holes for the pins to come up. I have to drill these two holes for the pins to come through and cut off a lot of this bottom area here, as you can see compared to this side. But I'm going to go walk it over to the car, um, test fit it, and if all goes well, we'll be starting the other side now. Okay. This side is in. And this side huh I'll be damned well there it is it's all nice and smooth and flush and the bracket goes right in where it's supposed to go yeah sweet and then the rubber surround will cover up all of the uh, excess stuff going on here that you can see the bracket because uh, the fiberglass isn't as wide here as it was on the factory bumper. But that's okay. I'll take that. All right, let's get the other side done. Well, the good news is the driver's side bracket after some trimming is, I think, exactly where it needs to be. Get ready to go mock it up on the car and find out. The passenger side is also trimmed down, sized up, and placed where it's supposed to be. But uh, I told you I would always be transparent in my issues and mistakes. So, in the time lapse when I was underneath drilling these holes, I... Uh, got out the Dremel and was Dremeling out some excess fiberglass that was gooped up under here so, could, so this bracket would fit in here. And in doing that, I knocked a lot of dust in my eye. I had glasses on, came around the crack around the side, and before I knew it, I had actually cut straight up through with the rotary disc and cut through the top of the uh, bumper, which in turn cracked the corner as well um you know stuff happens when you do this by your when you do this on your own uh i can fix it so i'm not too concerned about it but it's one of those things so i'm gonna go ahead and grab this bumper and stick it on the car and try to test fit it again and see what happens all right went with the new approach <sighs> went ahead and took the headlight out to see if the headlight was, the headlight housing was in fact the issue 
that I was having. And as you can see, that bolts up and that bolts up. So it is in this housing area here that is giving me all the grief that will not let me put this thing on. So after comparing the factory bumper housing with the aftermarket housing, it looks like in here is really, really thick comparative to that one. And this is a smooth surface. And this has this a little recessed lip here that I think needs to go away. So I'm gonna get the ground, get the sanding disc out and sand this thing smooth, shorten this thing up, and hopefully that'll get it to, uh, to fit where it's supposed to be. After what felt like forever, it's on. It fits. So now, all I need to do is take it off the car, put the old stuff, put the stuff back on the old bumper, and I can start working on this cosmetically, fixing all the nicks and the chips and the cracks, shaving the plate box and the tow hook cover and all that fun stuff. But Everything is in, using the factory mounting points. It all lines up. And just to show you, now obviously, it's missing the weather stripping, but all the body lines are smooth and everything lines up. So, awesome. I'm going to leave it here for this one and I'll pick up the next video with the uh, actual process of deleting everything and making this thing a little more customizable. Um, if you enjoy what you're seeing so far, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Later.